Welcome to Norway, a very cold Norway. I'm Nicola Hume and I am going to be taking part in the El Prix, which is run by the NAF or the Norwegian Automobile Federation. Now, every year they do the largest EV range test in the world. You know, when you buy an EV, normally you're told how far that car will go. So the WLTP range, if you will. This is a true test of that to see how far these cars will actually go, especially in these conditions. So I'm actually taking part in this, in this building here. There are over 20 brand new electric cars. I'm gonna be driving a Kia EV9. It's like an electric car lover's dream in there. Should we go check it out? Thank you so much for joining me. What is it about the El Prix that the FIA wanted to be a part of? Obviously here this is led by our mobility club in Norway and here we have a really unique market uh, compared to the rest of the world which has a huge EV penetration yeah. and you've got a lot of manufacturers also coming in from China etc. So here what we're doing is we're informing consumers, informing partners and getting a chance to test drive the vehicles. I'm very excited about taking part in it. In what I'm now calling my Kia EV9. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. I was just talking to Stig before. They've got pretty much all, I think they've got all of the manufacturers participating, all contributing, all providing cars for this experience. So as you said, it's exciting. It's got a lot of push. They just did some very nice presentations, very informative. Um, very useful. So tomorrow people will get on the on the road and start to give the cars a whirl and, and test around and it's going to be a great experience. Yeah, this, this is my kind of range test, doing it in the cold, up towards the mountains, yeah. in a beautiful country. It's going to be good. Thank you so much for chatting to me. Christina, thank you so much for joining me in the front of the car that you're driving in tomorrow for the big event. Is this your first time taking part in this test? No, I was actually there uh, last summer Okay, in the Audi. QA. Nice. So this is totally different to events that you normally do. I mean, you're a you're a stunt driver, you're a rally driver, but this is the kind of test where you you have to take it like a normal driver. I mean, any time I have an opportunity to go off road, I really want to do that. But no, this is very strict rules. Yeah, you can't do anything to enhance um, the range of the car. You have to let the car do the job. Yeah. and stay to the speed limit and yeah you have to report in everything so there we go we've had the presentations we've had a briefing i've met some people so these cars will all be charging overnight getting themselves ready for the big day tomorrow where we're just going to drive them until they come to a stop it's exciting isn't it i mean you you buy an electric car or you go to buy an electric car and a manufacturer will say well this car will do this amount of miles but mm. the thing is is that's not always the right number so this is the perfect way to test it but I guess there are some manufacturers that aren't too keen on this test are they? Well yeah there's been but they are on board really yeah. most of them and I think it's if it's good information for the members it's also good information for the customers yeah. or for the manufacturers yeah. so, so I think we have sort of arranged it up but some of the manufacturers they are more critical but yeah but there are cars so we can always find cars yeah in winter time it's up to 30 percent lower nice. range on the car than what the manufacturers say. So that's quite important information for the for people to know. Yeah. So you also do the exact same test in summertime as well. So you're testing all of the possibilities. Yes. So we take the same cars as we have today and test them in summertime and then we have the rotation next year again with winter and summer. So then you will get the picture. So I guess around yeah. zero or whatever minus eight it might be today, we're expecting about a 30% drop roughly. Yeah, of some okay. of the cars. Okay, I'm excited. Yeah. Thank you for letting me take part. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> Ingen, my co-driver. We're going to try to uh, drive as normally as possible as any other EV driver would do. We're going through a route of some city driving, cross country and then on to the motorway and then up into the mountains until this car comes to a complete full stop and will not move. As soon as the car stops, we'll probably be in the mountains, which is then going to be extremely cold. There'll be no power in the car to keep ourselves warm. We have a, a team of uh, rescuers on the way, okay. uh, so hopefully we'll be picked up uh, as soon as possible after we stop. But you know, we have 22 cars with us, so it might be a little bit of a wait and it will get cold. Okay, I'm excited. <laughs> Okay, 
We are just over four hours in. But actually, it's behaving pretty well. We've still got, I'd say, another four hours to go. We've got about 198 kilometres left. How are you doing in your fancy BMW? We're doing great. You're having a nice time? Yes. How's your consumption doing? Uh, it's pretty low for this big car. Yeah? yeah. How many kilometres have you got left? Uh, 150. Oh no, it's 149. 149? So That's because down. you... Th oh, sorry, put the yeah. window back up. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't want to say everyone's competitive, but everyone's definitely competitive. <laughs> How are you finding the consumption in the Toyota? 21 kilometers left, 9%. So I think we don't get through the tunnel, I'm afraid. Okay. We're at 0% and losing power rapidly. We're done. Uh, kilometers, full stock, 441. 41.9 after. I have to say thank you so much for today. We stopped at 441 kilometers, I think. Yeah. Which is quite good. We did well. Good range. Yeah. I'm proud of us, of what we achieved today. Have fun, me. So what is it about the Epri that's so important? I think it's a great opportunity to see the new models on the market. That's true. Uh, and also to get some uh, figures on what is the actual performance of these vehicles. This, I think, is so important to the consumers. We need to see in real life, in extreme weather conditions as we have here in Norway, which is the daily life of, of Norwegians. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and therefore, for them, it's extremely important. important is the charging when it comes to this test? As important as the range, in fact, because especially in the winter, the cars and the charging is much slower. So we have to, to take every car to see how fast they charge yeah. and how uh, much the, the, the cold weather in, has impact on the charging speed. So at the moment, we've got a load of cars charging yes. up. Have you already noticed quite a big difference when it comes to the cold weather? S some of the cars, yeah, yeah, really, and other cars is performing very well. There we go. We've learned a lot from this test. So apparently on average, a normal electric car will lose about 21% in these winter conditions. And most of them performed exactly that. But there are three cars that I do want to give a shout out to. One of them is the Kia EV9 that I got to drive. That only lost 12.5% of its range. And then the Lotus Electra, that was around 12.3%. But the Hi-Fi, the Hi-Fi is the second best performing EV in the history of this test. It only lost 5.9% of its range, which is so impressive. Right, so now they're gonna come back here in summer and do the whole thing all over again, which will be much warmer. So I'm gonna get a hot chocolate and I'll see you then.